We talked earlier about how forests help keep water clean and plentiful, but what are the indicators for a healthy watershed? Now, when watersheds are healthy and functioning well, they provide clean water, food, and habitat for native plants and animals. A healthy watershed has the right amount of vegetation to capture, purify, and store water, which allows its gradual release into streams that, in turn, reduces the risk of flooding and erosion. Healthy forest ecosystems and watersheds even affect air quality by absorbing pollutants and greenhouse gases. So, Della, a healthy watershed has a few key components. What are they? Well, it has to have vegetation on the banks, not only to help prevent runoff, but to also keep water cool. Yep. And a good flow of water. Mm-hmm. Waterways should be open so that fish and other aquatic organisms can move upstream or downstream. In other words, there shouldn't be human-made structures that block the waterway. That's a good one. The water at the bottom of the watershed should be as clean as it is at the top. People should minimize the use of chemicals and other pollutants that enter the stream. Absolutely. In a healthy watershed, people care and get involved. There might be people doing education or managing the stream, picking up trash, planting trees, or even helping other ways to help keep the watershed healthy from start to finish. Yeah, I really like that one. And lastly, another factor to consider is whether the watershed has indicator species. Now, indicator species, that's a good one. Let's define that a bit. Well, the textbook definition is an organism whose presence, absence, or abundance reflects in a specific environmental condition. Yeah, but come on, you can do this one in your own words. Okay, well that basically means that if you can find certain sensitive organisms in the water, mm -hmm. then the watershed is healthy, and if you can't find them, then there's probably a problem. Let's take a look at some of the small critters that you can find in a healthy watershed. Here at the Occoquan Wildlife Refuge, the students are able to net for macroinvertebrates and test the water quality. It's eight. It's eight. We're mixing it until the tablet is disintegrated, and then we're going to wait five minutes. Other scientists before us have come out and determined some animals to be pollution tolerant. That means they can live all day in polluted waters and be just fine. If you only find that kind of animal, what does that tell you? It's polluted. Yeah, the water's probably polluted. On the other hand, some animals are pollution intolerant or pollution sensitive, meaning if they are in polluted waters, they will not be able to survive. So if we find some pollution sensitive animals, what does that tell us? They're exactly right. So we can use what animals we find in order to infer what uh, the health of the watershed is. It looks like a shrimp. It is a shrimp, it's well a identified. Well, it's a shrimp? <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. There's a dragonfly eating another one. They're predators. Here, I'll Maybe put this Maybe it's back. a baby one of the stoneflies. So what was this one? That, that one? There you go. So that's, uh, I think that's a water stone nymph. That it might be a rifle beetle. Yeah, this, this, this water is really clean because we're finding all these macroinvertebrates. Really interesting organisms, right?